solve quadratic inequalities algebraically. So we're going to solve and graph that quadratic inequality. But first, let's look at the steps. All right, so this is how you would solve a quadratic inequality. We first make an equation. We solve that. We divide it up into regions. Then we check points in each region. And then based on which values work and which values don't work, that is how determ we determine what the answer is going to be. All right, first, let's go back and look at something we did in Algebra 1 just to re-familiarize ourselves with, with uh, inequalities. So if I had a compound inequality, which is what you see here, then I need to solve for w. So w is being multiplied by 3 and subtracted by 7. So we're going to add 7 to each of the parts. And then that gives us negative 9, which is less than or equal to. Remember, this is how you remember that this is less than. Uh, 3w and 17. Okay? So w is being multiplied by 3. We're going to divide each part by 3. Actually, well, first we're doing this, and therefore we have to do all the other ones. And we end up getting that negative 3 is less than or equal to w, which is less than. I could change that to a mixed fraction, so it's going to be 5 and 2 thirds. All right, and that's my answer. To graph it, I need a number line. You can have multiple numbers. You could just have the key numbers, you know, negative 3 and 5 and 2 thirds. I'm going to go with multiple numbers for now. So uh, remember, because here we have less than or equal to, I'm going to use a filled in circle. And then at 5 and 2 thirds, so it's going to be a little more than 5. So I can, I can extend this line, you know, go a little more so I can somewhere between 5 and 6. So there, you know, I'm going to have an open circle. Do that again. So I extended the number line, made this into a six and five and two thirds. It's roughly there, open circle. We could shade in between. I prefer to use like a barbell. I feel like it clogs up the numbers a little less. And we could put five and two thirds there if we want. Uh, we can check our answer and to check it. Just pick a number from the region. I think zero is the easiest, but you know I could have just as easily picked one or negative two, uh, you know, or even pi would work. I'd substitute it into the original inequality, the compound inequality, and what you see here is negative 16 is less than or equal to negative seven, which is less than 10. Uh, that is true, and most likely our answer is correct. All right, now. Let's solve and graph a quadratic inequality. We have one half of x squared minus two x minus six is greater than three. All right, so following the steps from earlier, first we have to change the inequality to equal sign, and now we have to solve that. I'm going to solve it by completing the square. Uh, you know, you could factor it if you want, you can use quadratic formula, but it's always a good idea to, to just practice completing the square. All right, that means I need to make the a value 1. So first I will multiply both sides by 2. And here's what I get. I'm going to bring the 18 to the other side, add 18 to both sides. And because I'm completing the square, I have to figure out what number would make the left a binomial squared. Uh, we take half of this value and then square it, ends up being 4. We factor the left side, simplify the right side. I get x minus 2 in parentheses squared equals 22. To get rid of that 2, I need to take the square root of both sides. 
And don't forget, a negative times a negative is also positive. So on the right side, I get plus or minus square root of 22 and add two to both sides. And here's my solution. So that's a very important number that we're going to have to use. So I think it's best to do this part on a you know separate side. It's not the main part of the work. Here's the main part of the work. So uh, I got the solution and it might be easier to work if I change those to decimals. So the approximation is negative 2.7 and 6.7. All right, now how will I use that? So step two involved me breaking a number line into regions. So I have negative 2.7 here and 6.7 here. And as you can see, that gives me three different regions. Now I'm going to call them region A, region B, and region C. And now we have to pick a number from each region to, you know, value to substitute back in equality. We're, we're testing the values. So for region A, I'm going to use negative 3. Uh, region B, 0. You know, it's easiest to work with, usually. And region C, I'm going to go a little more than 6.7, so I pick 7. And then we just substitute it into the original inequality, right, which is this one here. And on the left side, I get that 4.5 is greater than 3. Okay, that's true. All right, when I substitute 0, you know, that's easy. Everything becomes 0. The only thing left is the negative 6. Is negative 6 greater than 3? No, it's not. And you know what, it's that seven, I'm thinking back, maybe it's not the best choice. Maybe I should have picked something easier to work with, especially with, you know, you see that one half right there. So I'm gonna change it and we could do that. I'm gonna change this to an eight. Let's go with eight. Actually, you know what, let me see. I could have taken the seven uh, look at that, true skills. All right, substitute that. So uh, that's 64. Half of 64 is 32. 32 minus 16. That gives us, hold on, fingers and toes. That gives me 16 minus 6 is 10. 10 is greater than 3. That is true. All right, so now the only regions that I want in my solution I want region A and I want region C. Okay, because region B not you know the number did not work out. So therefore my solution is gonna look like this. X is less than two minus radical two, and x is greater than two plus uh, square root of twenty-two. And now to graph it, and notice by the way that I use the you know don't use these values here because let's let's be as accurate as we can be so because we want to be as accurate as we you know it's best to use this number here all right so now to graph it here's my number line label the key points that i need uh, zero is a good idea to put in there just because it helps you you know orient where the other numbers are all right, so because both symbol because I have less than and greater than, I need to use an open circle, and less than is to the left side, and then on the other end, got an open circle because we don't want two plus radical two, and that goes to the right side. And there's my solution, my answer, and my graph. I also want to show an example of what your work can look like. And if you use the quadratic formula, this is what you would see. And I you know, want to take this opportunity to thank the Val for lending me these notes a few years ago. All right, there you have it.